Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Crumbs and today we're going to be taking a look at 10 champions that absolutely need nerfs. Ever since the durability update, Riot has been on a roll with their constant influx of both buffs and nerfs. With this video, we're going to be breaking down what champions need nerfs, why they're so powerful, and maybe a thing or two that Riot could do to take them down a notch. Nonetheless, let's hop right in. Starting us off strong, we have an infamous duo that has been around for ages now, Senna and Tom Kench. While we won't be featuring any other duos in today's list, we thought it was important to include these two. Boasting above a 55% win rate for patches on end is enough reason alone to nerf these two. Taking a look at Senna, since her release, she has been relatively hard to balance. Her incredible scaling, paired with an oppressive laning phase, makes it difficult to push her into the AD carry role. So, every few patches, Riot will balance her as a support. This change ends up making her super strong, since she's able to farm souls far easier and can reach two item spikes before anyone else in the game. Her soul mechanic makes it so she can snowball extremely well, do tons of damage thanks to its crit, and outrange anyone in the game as the game drags on. And that's only one half of the duo. Moving on to Tom Kench, you've got a champion that Riot has reworked countless times before finally deciding he's a support champion. The recent changes to his ultimate have made him the ultimate frontliner, especially when paired with a marksman. Combine this with his extremely high base damage early on, and you've got a strong laner who serves as an unkillable frontline. Then you pair these two together and you have a monstrosity that sits around a 57% win rate at all ranks. Tom Kench is able to use his sheer tankiness to survive lane and have high gold income so that he can get tankier. During this, Senna is able to farm souls, and if she's ever engaged on, Tom Kench is there to save her. The worst part about this lane is how much kill pressure they have. If Senna or TK ever land a W, they are almost always guaranteed a kill. Between their high base damages and lengthy crowd control, there's no one that can truly stand up to their full combo. With this strong laning phase completed, they only get better. Senna is able to hyperscale into the late game while Tam Kench also becomes an unkillable hyper tank. Before we continue on to our next few champions that need nerfs, don't forget to check us out at ProGuides.com. Playing with powerful picks like this can be difficult at first, but with some practice, you can abuse them to climb insanely fast. With our in-depth guides, we can help you take your macro to the next level and build your game sense, so you can understand the meta just like a pro. If courses and lessons aren't your thing though, don't worry, we have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and dive right into our next champion. Pulling us back into the video, we've got the popular star from KDA, Seraphine. During her release, Seraphine was meant to be a mid laner, but found a ton of success in both the support and AD carry role. This is due to her extremely powerful utility, which includes her extending ultimate. In both roles, she is nearly sitting at a 55% win rate and is still getting buffed. For multiple patches now, Seraphine has been one of the best champions in the game, but that hasn't stopped Riot from giving her more buffs with new skins. Now, what is it that makes Seraphine so powerful? As we said before, the amount of utility she provides is absolutely game-changing. Her E gives her some nice slows and roots, while her W lets her heal, shield, and give her allies movement speed. Not to mention that her E and Q combo instantly clear waves. This means she can get wave priority in the blink of an eye without wasting any long cooldowns. Plus, with this type of range and clear speed, she can avoid danger while also maintaining a high CS. Overall, Seraphine is a powerful laner that can be extremely safe. This allows her to scale into the mid game where she can use her utility and damage to absolutely dominate teamfights. With her most recent buffs, we wouldn't be surprised to see her picked in pro play more than ever before. Moving on to our next champion, we've got a new one, it's Heimerdinger. Heimer has recently picked up some steam in the mid lane where he currently sits at a 54% win rate. Heimer has always been a strong champion, simply due to the amount of lane control he gets. His Q allows him to constantly shove out waves and take favorable trades. If he ever gets ganked, he can easily run back into his turrets for safety and will sometimes pick up a kill because of it. 
Heimer's W shoots a ton of rockets that deal quite a bit of damage and help clear out waves, but did you know that he only needs to land one of those rockets for it to deal a majority of its damage? This means Heimer can often fan out his W like an ash would in order to harass the enemy and shove the wave at the same time. Paired with his Q and W, his E lets him turn the tides of fights by not only CCing the enemy, but enraging his turrets to shoot a high damage pulse. Between his great damage and amazing wave prio, it's no surprise that Heimer has found a home mid lane. With time, we're definitely gonna see his bot lane play rate spike, which should end with a nerf, especially when we see him paired with Senna. Whether or not Riot decides to tone down his damage and wave clear is another story. With the next champion on our list, we've got Rengar Top. Not only does the lane offer multiple bushes for him to hop from, but he also utilizes an extremely tanky Bruiser build. With items like Gore Drinker, Death Stance, Cleaver, and Spirit Visage, he can become unkillable real quick. Rengar's power in a solo lane is all about that he has high sustain, quick burst, and insane power. During the laning phase, Rengar is able to constantly hop on his opponents with E, Auto, and Q for a quick trade. If they decide to hit him back, he can easily use his W to deal a bit of damage and heal. And while these small damage combos may not seem crazy at first, they add up quick. Since Rengar doesn't use mana and has relatively low cooldowns, he's able to constantly rotate his spells and take aggressive trades. Once he gets a few items, he's nearly able to 1v2 enemies every time he gets ganked. Overall, Rengar Top needs to be adjusted so that it's not as powerful as Chi's pick. A true nerf that could help deal with Bruiser Rengar or AP Rengar could be adjusting the healing percent from his W. While it can be annoying that he still deals quite a bit of damage, I think we can all agree that Rengar healing his entire health bar three times in one fight is far worse. Let's take a break from these champions and move on to our favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what is one champion you wish would get nerfed and how would you nerf them? Personally, I think having Shivana nerfed would be a dream come true. And I'm not talking about the Bruiser Shivana. I'm talking specifically about AP Shivana's damage on her E. I know it's a fun build, but it's too strong for a poke ability. It's like Corky Rockets with a larger AoE that leave a zone field and deal burn damage and barely need any aiming. I think it's a bit too strong. I think we should shy away from that kind of playstyle and move towards the Bruiser Shivana, which is completely fine. Just don't think you should be half HP with something that isn't really a skill shot. But that's my answer and we want to hear from you. So let us know in the comment section down below. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and dive right into our next few champs. Now, we're in the jungle and we've got Velveth. Of course, a new release had to be strong and while she was struggling a bit on her release, Riot determined that she was actually too strong and nerfed her and they knew because after the nerfs, she continues to sit above a 53% win rate and it's for a good reason. More and more people are picking up on how Belle should be played as well as what her damage looks like. I mean, just take a look at her kit and you can see exactly why she'd be the best jungle in the game. Her passive gives her infinite scaling, which means that if she ever gets a lead, she can snowball it for the rest of the game. Belveth is Q, offers extreme amounts of mobility so that she can gank lanes with ease while also having good AoE to clear camps. Her W, while being relatively basic, is what lets her pull off successful ganks. She can easily dash towards the enemy, knock them up with W, and use the Q refund to dash towards them for some extra damage. Then, don't even get started on her E. Early on, a lot of people thought it would be wise to invade Belveth since she was a scaling champion. We're sure everyone learned their lesson when they invaded and lost the 1v1 thanks to her E. Not only does it grant a whooping 70% damage reduction, but it'll grant lifesteal and fully stack conquer or lethal tempo. Overall, she has continued to grow her win rate as time passes, and we are horrified to see just how well she'll perform as people improve at her. Who knows, maybe Riot will step up and cut down her mobility and damage reduction, but I suspect not until we see quite a few games of Belveth in pro play will we then see a nerf Belveth. Maybe they want to keep her that way for worlds, it will be exciting, I'll give you that. 
Next up on our list, we've got Zack in the top lane. While this pick has been developing for three patches now, it has continued to show just how powerful it is. Zack top offers the amazing utility that other hyper tanks provide while also giving great damage and strong sustain. And while Zack's kit is relatively simple compared to the other champs on this list, it doesn't stop him from boasting above a 52% win rate. His abilities hit hard and his healing lets him sustain through the lane without ever worrying about getting low. If the enemy doesn't have hard CC, he can avoid ganks with ease thanks to his E. Diving into the mid game, Zack can easily start his fight with his E and Q. If he needs to peel for his allies, he can easily use his ultimate to disrupt the enemy and give his allies the space needed to play the team fight. Overall, Zack Top is growing in popularity and maybe it'll finally get enough attention to cut down his base damage and healing. Moving on to the next champion on our list, we all know you're not surprised to see Wukong in here. While his nerfs did hit him pretty hard, it hasn't stopped him from being an S tier pick. He may not be as brainless as he used to, but his absolute 1v9 potential is just as strong as ever. Wukong jungle continues to be powerful thanks to his strong ganks, extreme tankiness and overall great snowballing. His early clears feel really rough but that's why he tends to play for fights and look for ganks. With a small lead early on, he can start clearing with ease and take on multiple enemies at a time. If Wukong ever makes it to 3 items, the game is usually over. Between his tanky build and his passive, Wukong can easily face 3 plus enemies at once without dying. To go alongside this tankiness, he deals a lot of damage and offers insane utility thanks to his double knockoff on his ultimate. Overall, even if Wukong isn't as strong as he used to be, it doesn't mean Raya should ignore his power. If they're truly looking to take him down a notch, they can nerf his damage and tankiness, but in exchange, they can increase his damage to monsters. Before we continue on to the end of the video, if you want to join an amazing community of people like yourself that love lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So what are you waiting for? Join! Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and take a look at our final few champions that need nerfs. No one's surprised at this one, but we've got Renata Glask on the list. This powerful disengaged support struggled a little during her release, but ever since then, she has had above a 51% win rate. It seems more and more people are realizing just how strong she can be when picked to deal with heavy engage compositions. Her kit offers some of the best abilities in the game, while also letting her be relatively easy to pilot. Her passive is just a slightly worse version of Imperial Mandate, her Q is a strong displace ability, her W offers attack speed and a revive, her E is a simple damaging shield, and her ultimate is a combination of a Nami wave and your Draven's extreme tilt. All jokes aside, Renata is an amazing support that needs a few nerfs to her numbers. The issue is, it can be hard to figure out what part of her kit you can really attack. If you nerf her W or ultimate, she's just a worse Nami now. If you take out too much from her passive and E, she doesn't offer much of a laning phase anymore. You could go for her Q, but it'd be a pointless nerf. Overall, Renata is an extremely powerful champion who has had a strong win rate since her release. Be sure you don't underestimate her. Last but certainly not least, we've got Volibear Jungle. Now, while Volibear may not seem super strong at a glance, you have to consider how good his kit really is. Since his rework, Voli has had many ups and downs, but for the past few patches, he's been fairly strong. He offers great ganks, strong objective control, powerful scaling, and his clear is both fast and healthy. As a whole, Volibear kind of offers the entire package at the moment. He can easily charge at his enemies with Q and can't be CC'd out of it. If you do decide to hard CC him, it just refunds the cooldown. With his W, Volibear becomes a powerful fighter that can take many 1v1s. Not only does it deal quite a bit of damage, but it'll heal him quite a bit too. Pair this with his passive, and he's not likely to lose many fights by himself. Speaking of which, he can use his E to grant himself a shield, slow the enemy and deal a nice chunk of magic damage to them. Which reminds me, did we mention his ultimate? Riot decided that this strong jungler should have a built-in ohm wrecker into his kit. This allows him to take risk-free turret dives with his laners, not to mention that it has extremely high base damage. We think a few nerfs to his damage numbers should be enough to tone him down a bit and let other junglers shine. 
And that sums up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family over at ProGuides.com where we offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Good luck on the rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.